Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the processional. The processional today is led by Dr. Aaron Blackman, Department Chair and Associate Professor for the Department of Management and Technology in the College of Business, who is carrying the ceremonial University Name. Entering are the Master, Baccalaureate, and Associate Degree candidates. Now entering is the platform party. Gentlemen, please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Mr. Arnold James, Executive Director for Career Services at Imperial Aeronautical University Worldwide. Oh, oh say can you see by the dark was so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly and the rocket red and the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star span. 
ceremony for Embry-Riddler Audible University worldwide. At this time, it is my honor to introduce our stage guests for the evening. I ask that you please hold your applause until each has been recognized. Members of the platform party, as I call your name, please stand and remain standing. Starting in the back, on your left, Dr. Aaron Glassman, Department Chair and Associate Professor for Management and Technology from the College of Business and our Mace Bearer. Mr. Elliot Robinson, representing the Embry Riddle faculty. Dr. Manish Sharma, Dean of the College of Business. Dr. Ken Witcher, Dean of the College of Aeronautics. Mr. Ryan Gertson, our commencement speaker. And Dr. John R. Watrick, Chancellor and Riddle Aeronautical University worldwide. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, please rise as Mr. Jim Pepin offers the invocation. Let us pray. Wise and gracious one, we ask your blessings upon the students, faculty, and staff of Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. We have been called to the high task of seeking knowledge, promoting ethics, and seeking growth in body, mind, and spirit. We give thanks for the gifts of this class and the way they have made this university at a better place for having been here. Grant these students and family joy and satisfaction as they see their dreams of graduation fulfilled this day. We ask this in the confidence of your grace. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure once again to welcome you to the Embry Riddle Aeronautical University Worldwide 2021 Commencement Ceremony. We truly are worldwide. Over the course of your studies, you interacted with our faculty and staff and fellow students all over the globe in locations in the United States, Germany, Italy, Japan, Singapore, South Korea, Spain, and the United Kingdom. We recognize that many of you have traveled to attend this ceremony, and it is our great pleasure to welcome families and friends, our community friends, and our distinguished guests to the most important and anticipated event on our academic calendar, graduation. We wish to recognize several groups of individuals who play key roles in the successful operation of this great university and who contribute to the success of today's ceremony. The first group includes those individuals who have played a major role in preparing and mentoring our graduating seniors and master's degrees candidates for their future careers, our Embry-Riddle faculty, many of whom are joining us virtually this evening. The second group deserving special recognition, includes all of our dedicated staff, without whose many hours of tireless work, this ceremony would not be possible. I ask that these individuals please rise and be recognized. Please be seated. The most honored guests here today 
are the families of our graduates. Graduates, your family's love and support has helped to make this day possible. Graduating seniors and master's degree candidates, I ask that you now please stand and acknowledge your families for their support. Please be seated. All of you have worked so hard to be here today, and we celebrate each and every one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, now please join me in welcoming Dr. John R. Watrick, Chancellor of Emory Brewer Aeronautical University Worldwide Campus. We'll officially open our commencement ceremony. Thank you. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Andrew Riddle Aeronautical University, it is my pleasure to declare the 2021 commencement ceremony of Andrew Riddle Aeronautical University worldwide now open. I also offer my congratulations to each of you and to your families as well. We at Andrew Riddle are extremely proud of your achievements and are confident of your success. We know how much hard work you dedicated to each course you took, and because of that effort, this is a great day of celebration. Be very proud of your accomplishment. It is significant and will propel you to reach even greater success. And stay in touch with our great university. You are joining an elite team of graduates that will be with you on your lifelong journey. I sincerely hope that everyone enjoys the ceremony and savors the meaning of this day and its colors and traditions. I am honored to wel I am now honored to welcome our guest speaker for today's ceremony. Ryan Gottschall is Vice President of Maintenance Workforce Development for AAR, a leading aviation service provider to commercial airlines and government governments worldwide. He oversees AAR's various workforce-based initiatives and was responsible for the development of the Eagle Care Pathway Program. He is also president of Chosen Aerospace, whose purpose is to unite the aerospace industry to implement solutions to the workforce shortage. Ryan started the Spartan College of Aeronautics and Technology in 2011, holding the positions of Vice President of Education President of Spartan's Tulsa campuses and corporate offices. He previously spent three years at AR Corporate, Manage, Co corporate Corporation managing the training and ASAP programs in Oklahoma City. He began his career as a pilot instructor for Air Wisconsin Airlines Corporation, where he was responsible for Air Wisconsin's first learning management system and e-learning content used in the current pilot training. In 2005, he transitioned to the maintenance side of the airline as Air Wisconsin's manager of maintenance training and ASAP manager. Ryan was ATEC president from 2014 to 2018. He holds a bachelor in aviation and a master's of public administration from the University of Nebraska at Omaha. He is married and has three sons. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ryan Gottschall. Thank you so much. Chancellor Lautrette, Mr. Muldane, Dr. Witcher, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Glassman, Mr. Robinson, faculty, administration, family and guests, it's truly an honor to be with you this evening. To the graduating class, let me be one of the first to congratulate you on an accomplishment that few of you at this point will truly understand the significance of this day. This is not an insult, it's just the facts. When I received my bachelor's degree and master's degree, I know I too undervalued the time that I spent getting them and the future that would someday come to fruition because of the sacrifices each of us have made to finish our program of study. You see, 
There's already a big difference between you and those that started with you that are not here today. You finished. You didn't make excuses. You realized that life always gets in the way, and you found a way anyway to make it through in spite of those challenges. In these two words, a life of blessings are achieved. Nothing good comes easy, as the saying goes. I know in my own life that this is true. I grew up on a farm in Nebraska, which is about as far from aviation as one could get, I think. My parents farmed, their parents farmed, my grandparents farmed, and their parents farmed before they immigrated to the United States in the mid-1800s. I was the first in my family to take the leap from farming to the great unknown, the aerospace industry. I never could have imagined this journey was going to take me around the world, and that is why I'm so excited to be here today for each of you. And I know that the journey in aerospace will be as exciting as it was for me, with the highs and the lows, but I know that Emory Riddle has prepared you for success. Remember the vision statement of your soon-to-be alma mater. Emory Riddle will be the source of innovation and excellence in the aerospace education and research. Embry Riddle will be the unquestioned global leader in aviation and aerospace and higher education with a reputation for personal attention to success of all of its students. I see this vision played out every single day at AAR in our partnership with Embry Riddle in our Skill Bridge program that has expanded to seven military bases across the nation and to date has impacted 210 transitioning veterans to careers in aviation. Be proud to be considered one of the 140,000 alum. Like all commencement speakers, it's my hope that I can impart some good advice on each of you. I hope to do this tonight, but I know the odds are against me, as I cannot remember one thing from the three graduation ceremonies that I had to do. So, in light of that, um, here are seven lessons that I've learned so far in my career in aviation. First, continue learning. This is a difficult one because each of you have worked so hard to get to this day, and the last thing you want to be told to do is read another book or go to training. I challenge each of you to read 10 pages a day. That's 3,650 pages a year, or roughly 18 books. Just recently, AAR received approval from the U.S. Department of Labor and the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs for our National Apprenticeship Program. It has taken over a year, and I have learned so much through this process. And now, because of its approval, veterans that we employ can now use their housing allowance while they are working for us full time. Our first recipient received an $11,000 back payment from the VA just in time for rent. Keep learning new things that add value to you and your company. And always take a big with you, book with you when you travel, as 18 books are attainable. Second, maximize your experiences. Whether in, the, your, whether in your military career or as you transition to civilian life, make yourself available to, and volunteer for projects that are not necessarily required, but trust me, somebody is always watching. I remember a time when I was asked to travel to Doha, Qatar to meet with, uh, with the military on a program that we were bidding on during my days at Spartan College. I was sitting there with our VP of Business Development, a colonel and former F-15 pilot in the Air Force, a B-2 pilot, and an Air Force training instructor, and several others preparing to talk to the Qatar military about training programs they wanted us to support. At that moment, I thought, how in the world did a farm kid from Nebraska end up here? I felt uncomfortable a little bit out of my league with the people I was, I was with, but I soon realized that I was the Vice President of Education. I too had a role to play to represent our college and our academic success. 
This was an amazing experience for me. Though we did not win the contract, the experiences gained will last a lifetime. When opportunities to volunteer come your way, be the first to raise your hand. Third, face bad adversity head on. I realize that each of you has already experienced adversity in your life. And if you've not, please consider leaving right now, write a book on how to avoid it, and I know you'll make a million bucks. However, just kidding, all things aside, my day of adversity came when a doctor told me I was never going to be able to fly airplanes again. I was already at Air Wisconsin as a pilot instructor, and my hopes of becoming a 747 captain were gone in an instant. I really never wanted to do anything but fly airplanes, and, and for a few days I had to come to grips with this news, and I moved on to the maintenance side of the organization, and the rest is history. I now work for the largest maintenance repair and overhaul center in the country and the third largest in the world. I get an opportunity to change lives every day through the workforce programs that my team and I create. Adversity affects us all. Be prepared and when it comes, pivot and move on. Fourth, in your travels, stop and see the sights. During the first five years or so of my career, I traveled all over the place. I would fly in, work at the airport, and fly home. It was one day when I was the manager of training that I took my team out on a walking tour of downtown Philadelphia. This team building event was amazing for my team, but it allowed me to reflect on pausing to take in the culture of our great nation. Company travel is in all of your futures, so take the time to see the sights along your journey. Fifth, surround yourself with people your parents would approve of. Aviation has become the safest mode of transportation in the world, but not by accident. It took trial and error, death, and new technology, and people who understand and have high integrity to do the right thing all the time. Our industry expects perfection 100% of the time. There are no days off. There are no good excuses. I have been fortunate to have many people in my career that, I, that have instilled upon me the greatness that is required. The friends and colleagues that you make will influence you either for good or bad. You must choose wisely to ensure that each of you grow in your careers and reach your desired outcomes. Sixth, in life there are no shortcuts. I remember so well my flight instructor days when everyone was jockeying for a slot at a regional airline that at the time paid $18,000 a year. Some instructors thought right seat turbine time was better than just being a flight instructor to build time. Others thought and went to the corporate route to get turbine time. And in the end, they all ended up in the same place and in most cases behind the CFI who just pushed through a not so glorious time on their journey to a major airline captain. I see this playing out today in my own, own organization. Everybody wants to be the vice president of maintenance or the general manager with one year of experience. Instead, ask yourself, what am I doing today that will prepare me for where I want to go? Am I leveraging the resources that are available to me by my company to reach my desired goals. Ensure you communicate your goals with your boss and go for them. Lastly, give back your blessings. The education that you have received from Embry-Riddle will pay back more than you can imagine. Be on the lookout for opportunities to make a difference. My opportunity came on a flight back from Chicago to Tulsa, Oklahoma 10 years ago. I was not supposed to be on that flight that day, and neither was the passenger beside me. We started talking, and he was a pastor from Tanzania, Africa. I went to the church he was speaking at, and I met an amazing group of people at the church who had an organization called Asking for the Nations. Since this meeting, we have provided for his children to go to school, to college, we built his church, and we're now in the process of building an educational center 
three miles from Kilimanjaro International Airport in Tanzania, where we plan to teach aviation programs. Thank you. This relationship started with a simple conversation and is changing lives every day in a part of the world where survival to the next day is a common goal. I have no doubt each of you are going to be blessed in your career. Give back and watch the blessings flow. These seven lessons, continue learning, maximize your experiences, face adversity head on, in your travels, see the sights, surround yourself with people your parents would approve of, um, uh, and give back your blessings, and there are no shortcuts, I would say and go as far, if applied, will bring you success in your life you never thought possible. It is my hope that each of you have an opportunity to reflect on each of these lessons and figure out their application in your own lives. Congratulations to each of you for reaching another major milestone in your life. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this day for with you and your families. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan, for your thoughtful words, seven lessons, and sound advice for our graduates and for all of us. As a symbol of our gra uh, gratitude, we'd like to present you with the Distinguished Speakers Award for all you've done. A number of our graduating students today are veterans of military service. As a group, will they join all veterans to rise and be recognized? Thank you, veterans. Please be seated. At this time, the faculty of Ember River Aeronautical University worldwide are pleased to present the candidates for graduate degrees. I take this opportunity to share some interesting information about the Whitting Ceremony. The origins of academic regalia are obscured in history, but believed to have originated in the 12th and 13th centuries. The wearing of distinctive regalia for universities consisting of a cap, gown, and hood began in England. There, the statutes of certain colleges prescribe the wearing of a long gown by faculty and students. Although originally attached to the robe, the hood subsequently became a separate garment. Interestingly for educators of old, the deep pocket of the hood was used to collect alms and to collect food for nourishment. Colors have become important in distinguishing one degree from another and in describing one's graduate university. In keeping with this tradition, Emory Riddle's hood reflects the school's colors, royal blue and gold. The field of graduate study is designated by the color of the satin binding. Silver for the Master of Science in Aeronautics, the Master of Science in Aviation Maintenance, the Master of Science in Aviation and Aerospace Sustainability, the Master of Science in Cybersecurity Management and Policy, the Master of Science in Unmanned Systems, and the Master of System Engineering. Drab for the Master of Business Administration in Aviation, the Master of Science in Engineering and Management, the Master of Science in Information Security and Assurance, the Master of Science in Leadership, the Master of Science in Logistics and Supply Chain Management, the Master of Science in Management, and the Master of Science in project management. When our degree candidates cross the stage, you will note that a number of them are wearing medallions. Those master's degree candidates wearing gold medallions will be graduated with distinction, as they have achieved a grade point average of 4.0. As a group, will these students please rise and be recognized?
Please be seated. Candidates will be presented by the dean of their respective college. From the College of Aeronautics, Dr. Ken Witcher. From the College of Business, Dr. Manish Sharma. At this time, I invite Dr. Ken Witcher, dean of the College of Aeronautics, to approach the podium. Candidates for master's degrees from the College of Aeronautics, please rise. Dr. Wachrep, it is my honor to present the candidates for College of Aeronautics master's degrees as recommended by the faculty. This begins the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Aviation Maintenance. Bradley Stephen Henson. This begins the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Aeronautics. Heather B. Castle. Joy Cooper with distinction. Christy Rose Franco with distinction. Crystal Nicole Salerno. This begins the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Cybersecurity Management and, po and Policy. Torian Dior Torres. Leilani Tiare Wong Hui. This begins the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Unmanned Systems. Ahmed Magi Imam, with distinction. the presentation of bachelor's degrees from the College of Aeronautics. At this time, I invite Dr. Manish Sharma, Dean of the College of Business, to come forward. Candidates for master's degrees from the College of Business, please rise. Dr. Wachrep, it is my honor to present the candidates 
for College of Business Master's degrees as recommended by the Board. This begins the candidates for the degree of Master of Business Administration and Aviation. Tasha Renee Sutter. This begins the candidates for the degree of Master of Science and Engineering Management. Solomon Alconti. Perla Matthews Cardenas. Shandrea Richard. This begins the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Information Security and Assurance, Nathan Chaz Rapkin, with distinction. Brandy Marie Holfelder, with distinction. Chet Hershaw. This begins the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Leadership, Stephen J. Singleton. This begins the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Logistics and Supply Chain Management. Dana Elmore with distinction. <laughs> Josiah Moroke Monaye. Robert Militech. Roderick R. Patterson, Jr. Rhonda Seal, with distinction. <laughs> D. 
David Serrano Jr. with distinction. This begins the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Management, Michael K. Shenevin. Amber Marie Nelson, with distinction. Stephanie Razor. <laughs> Stephen Clifford Sheller with distinction. This begins the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Project Management, Armando Giovanni Magana, with distinction. <laughs> Eliana Vidai Chaver. concludes the presentation of master's degrees from the College of Business. This also concludes the presentation of master's degrees. I now share with you information regarding our undergraduate degree candidates. When our degree candidates cross the stage, you will note that a number of them are wearing honor cords. I'll take a moment to explain the significance of these accoutrements and to recognize those wearing them. Those graduates wearing white cords have achieved grade point averages of between 3.5 and 3.69 and are to be graduated cum laude with honors. As a group, will these students please rise and be recognized? being none. Those graduates wearing red cords have achieved grade point averages of between 3.7 and 3.89 and are to be graduated magna cum laude with great honors. As a group, will these students please rise to be recognized? <laughs> Finally, those graduates wearing red or gold cords have earned a grade point average between 3.9 and 4.0 and are to be graduated summa cum laude with highest honors. As a group, will these students please rise and be recognized? At this time, the faculty of Embry-Riddler Aeronautical University worldwide are pleased to present the candidates for undergraduate degrees from the College of Aeronautics, the College of Arts and Sciences, and the College of Business. Will the candidates for undergraduate degrees please rise? <laughs> Dr. Watson, it is my pleasure to present the candidates for undergraduate degrees as recommended by the faculty.
receives a candidate with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Aeronautics. Mark Scott Daniel. Fernando Anthony Del Cid IV. Magna Cum Laude, Alpha Sigma Lambda. James Earl Jones, Summa Cum Laude. Dong Pa Fan Win, Magna Cum Laude. This begins the candidates with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Safety Management. Morgan Ashley Falls, Summa Cum Laude, Alpha Sigma Lambda. This begins the candidates with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Unmanned Aircraft Systems. Christopher Cook, Magna Cum Laude. This begins the candidates for the degree of Associate of Science in Aeronautics, Curtis J. Lynn. This begins the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Aviation Business Administration, Trevor Marshall Lilly. This begins the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Logistics and Supply Chain Management, Sarah Ann Clotter. This begins the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Technical Management, Stephen J. Fussy, Summa Cum Laude, Alpha Sigma Lambda. Jaina Lynn Ferocha. Scott Russell Huff. This begins the candidate for the degree of Associate of Science in Technical Management, Christopher John Ritt. Timothy Joseph Edwards II. This concludes the presentation of undergraduate degrees. Now we arrive at the moment for which we've all been waiting. Dr. Washington, would you please join me at the podium? Will all of the graduating candidates from all of the colleges please rise and remain standing? Dr. Washington, these candidates have completed all the requirements of their degrees. With the recommendation of the faculty of Ember Riddle Aeronautical University, I am pleased to present them to you for the conferring of degrees. This, this is the moment. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer on you, as appropriate, the Associate of Science degree, the Bachelor of Science degree, and the Master of Science degree with all rights, privileges, honors, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations. You may now move your castle to the left side of your marker board, symbolizing your new status as a graduate of Ember Riddle here in Oxford University. Congratulations.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise as we present our alma mater. You may find the words on the last page of the program. Eagles gather near, we lift our voices loud and clear, soaring high, oh alma mater, threads of blue and gold, united we soar in vast open skies. Every riddle we hail, the great memories will hold. So celebrate this special occasion. I ask that you please remain standing as Mr. Jim Pepin offers our closing benediction. Well, graduates, here you are at this moment. I want to share one quick story with you. I got to meet Harriet and Ozzy about seven years ago. Harriet and Ozzy had a beautiful web page. My wife was inundated with it. She slept by that web page. She watched that page every day. See, Harriet and Ozzy are two eagles who live in South Florida, and they had three eggs in the nest. And every morning, I would know what they did, whether they put their little beak out yet or whether they got worms, whatever they got fed, I watched them, and I heard about them, and I got nauseated with them for about 48 days. I came home on day 49 and my wife was in tears. She was in tears because see, the eagles get fledged. And that's when mom and dad throw them out of the nest. Well, you are all eagles. And we are fledging you today, throwing you out of the nest. But we know that you're going to soar to great heights and do great things and bring true honor to your alma mater. Let us pray. And now as we leave this place, may eternal love enfold us, may spiritual power strengthen us, and may hands comfort us, and may we be carried on eagles' wings until we meet again. Amen. Family and friends, please be seated. We ask that you remain seated until the platform parts and all graduates have left the area. Thank you.